March the 21st is marked by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, for poets of lo and lovers of poetry to celebrate World Poetry Day. Ola Awakon, a poet and journalist, commemorates the day with his poem titled My Right to Write. The poem beams a searchlight on la ills in the society. My right to write, my pain to fight. Though my muscle is weak, I may not have the strength to struggle. But my pain will hustle to tell the story of mountain upheaval, the unending explosions and crippling corruption. To talk about the brewing polytricking, to talk about the dead values, the blood shedding, to tell the story of the master thief who chastises the hungry masses. Why won't I write? My right to write, my pain to fight. I may not have a loud mouth, but my fountain pen can shout. Shout about the crying soil. Shout about the wailing soul. Shout about the unborn baby who has been prosecuted for bribery. Shout about the boot licker who won't stop licking dirty footwears. Shout about the defaced books. Shout about the celebrations of insanity over sanity. Shout about the celestial impurity, romancing impunity. Why won't I write? My right to write, my pain to fight. The flight of my poetry, journey of my words, will not fear to talk and see like the seer. But I fear if shadows of the culprit have not kissed my blood. I fear if my hand firmly on the pen has not infiltrated the ink. Posterity will judge if I don't say it. Yes, I am not pure. I will still write. I will give a voice to my pen. Well, the purpose of the day is to promote reading, writing, publishing and teaching of poetry throughout the world. UNESCO says it is a day to give fresh recognition and impetus to national, regional and international poetry movements. Poet Olola De Ajayi joins us now in the studio for more perspective on this celebration. Good to have you here on the News Hour. It's good Thank to be here. Yes, you are a poet. Yes, I have. And we know that you write lots of poems. Definitely. <laughs> but give us a bit of what you think is it is in Nigeria. Do you think we have lots of poet lovers? You know, what is the poet industry like in Nigeria today? Okay, um, I think today Nigeria, Nigeria is getting more appreciative of poets in the sense that, I mean, recently you could see in some adverts, some poets had been used, you know, to do some bank adverts and all that. Before, Nigerians, I think we just used to think, poems are just so difficult to understand, like, they don't break it down enough. But so many people, so many poets right now have come down to the level of the average Nigerians write poems that are kind of appreciated nowadays. Mm. And I think we're going to get there very soon in Nigeria, whereby, um, as citizens, we are so appreciative of um, the voice of poets in that they, they fight political fights, religious fights, cultural fights for the average Nigerians. I think we're getting there. Mm. All right. Um, in this age of um, social media, how attractive is the image of poetry in the media? Oh, very, very attractive uh, because you could see that uh, poetry as a genre has given birth to different um, branches, would I say. Uh, look at um, spoken word artists. Mm -hmm. You can see them, um, they have several YouTube channels that people log into to watch. And mm -hmm. um, you can see it's been used as entertainment in, in so many forms. Uh, because some, for somebody like me, I write um, what you call indigenous poems. Mm -hmm. And my poems are like, uh, they are written in my native dialects. Some of my poems are written in my native dialect, and 
these are poems like they are like native dialect, not Yoruba. No, no, native dialect, Ekiti dialect okay. to be specific. Okay. I'm from Ekiti and I write some poems in my dialect. And these poems, wherever I take them to, uh, when they are performed, people get to know about the history of um, my state and people get to key into this. So on social media, there's a movement that um, portrays poets as entertainers mm. as well as intellectuals. Yeah, okay. and, and talking about being an intellectual, you said that you know being mm. a poet is also instrumental for change. If I got you correctly, yes. How far have you been able to use that this tool, you know, to make that change in your society or in your small community, if as it were? Okay. Um, although Nigeria as a country, we've not gotten to the point whereby poets are being, you know, chased around because of their work. Mm. Because just by the fact that we, we put in a lot of um, political activism in our work, because there's no poet, poet that doesn't rise without passion, it's either hunger, love, hate, different emotions. So uh, I think poets in Nigeria right now, the movement is that, you, you know, you, there's um, f um, eight speech right now, but you know, when I write my poems, and I'm directing it um, at maybe the government or whoever it is. I can hide my word. I can ha hide behind my words, and I can say some things diplomatically. That mm -hmm. when the person that um, the poem is directed to sees it, then they know that okay, this is for me. But because I can be ambiguous with my words, you don't. You can't come at me to say this is some form of hate speech because it could mean something to you and mean something to someone else. So it's really helpful as poets to be able to you know, be involved in political activism because you can get away with saying a lot of stuff. All right, and do we have a dialogue between poetry now and other forms of art such as um, music, dance, theatre? Uh, yes, there's, it's, it's always been, you know, there's a blend between... A synergy. Yeah, there's a synergy between music and poetry. Poetry itself is music, there are lyrics in it, there are rhythms, you know, rhymes and all that in poetry. So it's a form of music and as well art. If you see a, um, a work of art, the first thing you think about is what inspired this. So poetry is also in, you know, drawings in art. Poetry is in any form of entertainment that you could see. I think generally poetry is like the, the, the grandfather of all subjects because there's nothing basically that you wouldn't touch in poetry. There's no subject else. I mean, medicine, whatever subject this is, science, the background is in poetry. It is mm. the tr mainstay of um, traditional mm. art, isn't mm. it? Yes, yes. And, and, and talking about, you know, being an art, what's, what's the level of, um, how do I put it now, how, what's the level of participation in schools, talking about students, mm. do they have that interest, you know, to practice or to learn the skill of, of poetry? Okay, um, before I say that, I think maybe, to some extent, the federal government probably could do a little bit more to encourage poets, uh, major literary arts, because um, if I write a book and it's been recommended and you see something in it that is a classical work of art and it's been recommended rather than the um, American literature, whatever literature that has been instilled, has been used right from time in school, you know, when indigenous works are being accepted as the major um, what, what students you use, mm. I think people will adopt it. Mm -hmm. So basically it's um, left to the people in charge to encourage people, writers, uh, for them to write that. You know, these books will get across to the people that matter a lot. Because if they don't, I mean, it's difficult for me to take my work of art and say, oh, we the people, is talking about all the people of Nigeria, you've got to read this, and uh, okay, Kitty States, this is talking about the history. Because I, w when I was writing this work, when I read, um, I read about my state, I Googled and I found that there was basically nothing um, about our history. So I said, okay, I was going to write about it. I was going to take it there, and I'm going to, you know, introduce my work to um, growing, um, upgrowing, like students and mm. all that, because our languages are going extinct. So, you know, I, I went there and they said, oh, there's a whole lot of process before you could get your work adopted in school. You have to get through a committee and all that. So I was discouraged. So I'm like, oh, if someone up there, uh, I mean, in the education ministry also could actually encourage such work, people will be encouraged to write, bring out. Yeah, yeah, that was a, a very yeah. good way of um, advertising your book, but uh, let's let's <laughs> move on now. Okay. You talked about recommending, uh, you know, certain books, certain works of poets. Yes. But y for you to recommend, you have to be able to recognize a great work of art. 
how do we recognize great poets? Okay, first of all, you must have heard from their work, mm -hmm. you must have read their work, you must have seen something unique in their writing. I mean, most poets don't just write for, like I said, they don't just write from this, for the sake of writing, they write because there's a passion involved. And in this country right now, you will see that most poets are probably writing about political activities because of all the um, hungering activities. So there's no how that uh, someone will put something out there yeah. that is very good, that when people see it and recognize it and it's been talked about, uh, people will let, get to adopt it. But it's a lot of hard work because basically if you don't go through the traditional publishers, you have to be out there pushing out your work by yourself, like what I was doing right yeah. now. <laughs> Free advertisement. So, <laughs> I have to be out there. Like I've written something, it is until you read about it before you know, oh, what okay. Is, uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a poet she has written something. So it's a lot of hard work, but Indeed. we're getting there. A lot of hard work and we wish you well in your journey mm. as a poet and we hope others to toe the line and thank embrace you. the beauty of being a poet thank you very much thank Olola Ajayi for your contributions thank on you. the thank news you for being hour. Here. thank you